Looking at this particularly attractive Porsche SUV, I can't help but think about the Porsche SUV that started it all, and then having to keep my breakfast down. <laughs> Hi guys, Eric here and welcome back to my channel. Today I will be having a look at this 2015 Porsche Macan S diesel. And let's not beat around the bush, it is pretty. Much prettier than Porsche's first attempt at an SUV. Because of the success of the Mercedes-Benz ML class, as well as BMW's X5, it made sense that Porsche would want a piece of the luxury SUV pie with its own KN. And on paper, everything seemed fantastic. It will have great road handling and will also be capable off-road thanks to a low-range gearbox and clever traction control. Couple that with some serious punch from its range of engines and the idea that it will be cheaper than Porsche's 911 series and you have success on your hands. You get so much more Porsche for your money. What could go wrong? Oh my gosh, the styling. The styling could go wrong. And it did. I remember the first time I saw one of them. Truthfully, it was just plain ugly. The headlights seem to be too small, and the lower air intake's too big, while the rear styling looked bulbous and unattractive. It really is such a pity, considering it did deliver on-road as well as off. Interior quality was good for the time, and come on, you got the badge with the practicality. Even with those looks, it was a big success, making up for 47.3% of all Porsche sales in 2005. I was shocked to say the least, but to each his own I guess. It was offered with a wide range of petrol engines. The range kicked off with a VW 3.2 VR6 engine producing 184 kilowatt and 310 newton meters of torque. The range topped off with a 4.5 liter twin turbo V8 with a monstrous 384 kilowatt and 720 newton meters of torque. By the KN second generation, the styling seemed much more toned down and derivative. Not to say that it was a bad thing. I wouldn't call it gorgeous, but it was a remarkable improvement. I really fell in love with the interior though. I adore buttons in a car and the KN, just like the Panamera, had no shortage. I took to the cabin so much that I started looking at the KN in a different light. But something was still missing. And then, in 2014, it arrived, the Macan. When it comes to its styling, I feel as though this is what the KN should have been all along. The proportions are excellent, and the front end looks aggressive without reminding me of a catfish. But for me, those rear light clusters are perfection. If you couldn't tell, I really like the looks of the Macan. But it got even better. In the Macan, you rest easy with a 5-star Euro NCAP rating. Then you get inside, your senses are rewarded with a stunningly crafted cabin with excellent materials, as well as exceptional build quality. I do believe that lately, when it comes to fit and finish, no one does it like Porsche or Audi. Interestingly, the Macan is actually based on the first generation Audi Q5. However, it is 43mm longer and 36mm wider. It also shared its front and rear suspension, albeit thoroughly modified. The Macan, which is Javanian for Tiger, was launched in two derivatives, the Macan S and Macan Turbo. With time came the Macan S diesel, like our test unit here, and the Macan GTS, the GTS filling the gap between the S and the Turbo. All engines were mated to a 7-speed dual-clutch gearbox. In 2016, Porsche released its entry-level Macan with a 2-litre straight-four turbo with 185 kilowatt and 375 newton meters of torque. 
quite a far cry from the turbo's 324 kilowatts and 600 newton meters of torque, but more than adequate. But the Macan S diesel is no slouch either. Let's take a closer look at this stunner. I just love modern automotive interior design. We have come a long way. Even by 2021 standards, this Porsche Macan's interior is beautiful. I love its unique layout. It passes with flying colours whether you take it all in at the same time or go over it with a fine tooth comb. The first two things that I notice when I get into the Macan is this intricate Porsche logo on this leather clad sport steering wheel with beautiful brushed aluminium accents. The paddle shifts to the PDK gearbox are also made out of solid aluminium. The other thing is the interesting layout of the dials. It is divided into three circles. The rev counter takes center stage, with the speedometer in the left circle, and the full color drives information display in the right. I feel as though the speedometer might have been a bit of an afterthought, but luckily there is a digital speed readout below the rev counter. Now this has been Porsche's layout for decades, but it still stands out from the norm. The fit and finish is exceptional. Soft Nappa leather covers these supremely supportive seats, as well as the top of the dash. Soft touch plastics are everywhere, even in places that you won't normally touch. All storage areas are lined with a soft material to avoid rattles while driving. All the switches on the center console, on the doors, and on the overhead are accented with these thin chrome strips. Even the seat adjusters are made of metal. Such a sense of occasion, and rather annoyingly, kind of reminds me of my own car shortcomings. Then I realize that there is more to this interior than meets the eye. I love the subtle click you get from all the switches. It just elevates the general experience of owning a Macan, and also helps to justify the premium that it demands over its rivals. Considering this car errs on the side of sportiness, I was pleasantly surprised by its storage solutions. The glove box is a bit small, but the door pockets front and rear are both wide and deep. The front cup holders follow suit. I wish that you could cover the cup holders when not in use, but this is really nitpicking. There is another storage area underneath the same armrest where you can find auxiliary and USB connections to the very capable stereo. While we're on the subject, Bluetooth audio streaming also comes as standard in the Macan. Get in the back and you won't feel shortchanged whatsoever thanks to ample knee room and just enough headroom. The beautiful design from the front doors also extends to the rear. The only downside is, is that with this black headliner and tinted rear windows, it can feel a tad claustrophobic back here. The boot though is on par with its rivals. It comes with tethering hooks, a grocery hook, as well as rear parcel shelf. The rear seats fold completely flat in a 40-20-40 configuration. This means you can slide your items from the rear to the front of the cabin without any annoying ridges in your way. Being inside the Macan awards you a great sense of accomplishment. It really makes you feel special. Out on the road and I finally understand why the Macan is so much more expensive than its Q5 brother. The driving experience is, to say the very least, fantastic. This is a driver's car. I love the feel of the steering. It tells you exactly what the front wheels are up to and it is perfectly weighted. The brakes are also strong thanks to very big ventilated front and rear discs. It's almost never jerky, at least not until you get used to it. The Macan comes as standard with Porsche's 3070 split four-wheel drive system. It only sends 30% of the power to its front wheels. This gives you the illusion of being pushed rather than pulled, which adds to the experience. The engine is a real gem. I can't hear diesel clatter coming into the cabin. I can't even tell that this is a diesel engine to begin with. Then there is the torque. 
The shove of 580 newton meters combined with a very quick acting PDK transmission helps you forget about some of the downsides of owning a diesel engine. Thankfully, it reminds you of its benefits. With a combined fuel consumption of 6.1 liters per 100 kilometers and amazing overtaking capabilities, I find little reason to opt for the petrol Macan S. Driving around town is a doddle, thanks to the relatively small dimensions of the Macan, combined with quite a powerful engine. The turning circle is also surprisingly tight for an SUV. Combine that with front and rear PDC as well as a reversing camera, and this car is no more difficult to navigate than any other car in its class. Another noticeable aspect about the driving experience is the lack of tyre roar and wind noise. Even with these optional 21-inch wheels, this cabin is fantastically insulated from the outside world. This means that at highway speeds you can listen to relaxing music in the background or have a calm conversation with a passenger. I am however saving the best for last, the dynamic chassis control. Essentially a system that alters the suspension, gearbox behaviour, steering feel and throttle response based on what mode you're in. I've been in a couple of cars that offers a variation of this, but I am noticeably shocked at how well this system performs, particularly the adaptive dampers. When in sport mode, the steering becomes beautifully weighted and the car corners nice and flat. There is ample amounts of grip thanks to those aforementioned tyres and the suspension, while firm, never feels choppy. Put it in comfort mode however and this car is transformed into a fantastic long distance cruiser. The comfort is exemplary. It's like magic. There is a caveat though. Dynamic chassis control is an option, so when buying new, be sure to specify from the options list. Or when buying used, be sure that the car is fitted with it already. It makes a lovely difference. I truly am struggling to find the compromises here. When it comes to driving, this Porsche does it all. Plus it makes you feel special and accomplished and you get to drive Porsche's prettiest SUV. I guess if there is one thing to mention, it's that Porsche parts are quite expensive and there is quite a limited dealer network. Also, when you're buying used, be sure to find one that has a full service history. Then come time to sell it again, you have the peace of mind of excellent residual value. Honestly, well done Porsche. Thank you so much for watching another one of my videos. I thoroughly enjoy making these. If you enjoyed it, please remember to subscribe to my channel and also to like the video. I have loads more coming up, so stay tuned. Until next time, bye.